go back to your first points on religion and touch on our first trending story for today. Acting President Yemi Oshimbajo has berated gospel preachers for failing to lend support to the federal government's anti-corruption war by failing to preach against the scourge. Now, speaking at the 30th National Millennial Conference of Students Christian Movement of Nigeria that held in Enugu, Oshimbajo noted that preachers were preoccupied with preaching prosperity rather than righteousness. He quoted, or stated, quote unquote, very rarely do you hear our preachers talking about corruption from their pulpits. If a nation is not righteous, nothing is going to help it. Oshimbajo said the problem with Nigeria was neither ethnicity nor religion, but systemic corruption. He said that corruption had been so entrenched in the country that if you dare challenge it, you will be in the minority. He, however, challenged the youths to change the narrative and make the difference by checking the impunity of those that had stolen resources of the country. Quote unquote, he further went on to say, our problem in this country is not ethnicity or religion. It is not about Christians or Muslims. Our problems are the same wherever you go in this country. The story of our country is about good and evil. It is about those that have left us in this condition by stealing our common resources. Do not let anyone deceive you. Now, Chukudi, the report goes on, but wow. First of all, uh, acting, acting president and vice president Yemi Oshimbajo is also a pastor himself, well, right? That, and I, it's I was quite going encouraging. To he's not just yeah. a pastor, he's a senior pastor. There we go. He's mm -hmm. a senior pastor himself. And it's quite encouraging and a breath of fresh air to hear a senior pastor coming out with this statement. What do you think? You see, let us separate our leaders. You know, we have political leaders, yeah. we have traditional leaders, we have religious leaders. Mm -hmm. Now, our focus is on two sets of leaders, the political leaders and the religious leaders. Permit me to read a section of the Holy Al-Quran. Go for it. This is chapter 4, verse 59. Go for it. All ye who have believed, obey Allah and obey his messenger, and the people of authority amongst you. Now, further, whoever obeys me has indeed obeyed Allah. Whoever disobeys me has indeed disobeyed Allah. Whoever obeys the leader has indeed obeyed me. Whoever disobeys the leader has indeed disobeyed me. Are we not... We have plenty Muslims in Nigeria, yeah. We also yeah. have plenty Christians. Now, let me now, permit me to read from Romans chapter 13. Romans chapter 13, verse 1. Everyone must submit to governing authority, for all authority comes from God. And those in position of authority have been placed there by God. So everybody out there that's currently watching that thinks that Islam and Christianity are two wholly separate concepts, I Thank think you. Chukudi may have just proven you wrong. Thank you. Now... The African traditional religion, I'm not an adherent, my mm. grandfather was, and I have friends who say they are, you know, traditionalists. I am very certain, if we go by all the little, all the little scenes that we have seen in Hollywood movies, that there is also respect mm. for constituted authority. In the Igbo language, there's what you call Aru abomination. Yeah. For example, when you disobey, for example, like the king and the Ezemon, the chief priest, that man that used to rub white chalk mm. on his face, will come and say, the wrath of the gods will visit upon you. Now, we have looked at these three religion practices clearly. But the truth is, like I said, political leaders, religious leaders. Our religious leaders only have a moral body. And why is it a moral body? It's a moral body because they are supposed to be representatives of religion practices that you have a lot of adherents who look up to them. But Chukudi, I have a point to make. Nigeria, yes or no, is a secular state. It's a secular state. Do you think we give too much authority to our religious leaders? Do you think we look at them for too much influence in society? It is really very, very clear. And that is why before elections, you will see our political leaders visit them. For, so for some, it's for the photo ops. You see them kneel down at the altar and raise their hand. And the daddy G.O. Yeah. or the man of God will place his hands upon him and anoint him. Or the sheikh who will say, you are the chosen one. This is the, the example I want, the, the illustration. We have religious leaders who only have a moral body because they are there as representatives of Christ or the Almighty Allah on earth. In quotes, people can debate that and argue. I don't have any problem with that. Now, we have political leaders who we elect to represent us. I don't have any business with my reverend father, with my reverend sister, with my pastor, with the Malim, because I did not elect him into that position. He was called by God. You know many of them used to say God called him. He was called by God. He picked up his phone and God called him. But I have a problem with 
political leadership because I elected you to represent my interest and you're supposed to serve out a particular tenure, consolidate on the achievements of government yeah. or get rid of all the issues in government. Now, Professor Yemi Oshibaji, I want to beg you. You are a senior pastor. We appreciate the fact that you have come out to say that our preachers should focus on the things that will change our society because the truth is never in the history of this country, aside from maybe a, a game between Nigeria and Brazil, Will you see a lot of people congregate on a Sunday or on a Friday at a particular venue? Our churches are filled to the brim on Sundays. The mosques are filled to the brim on Monday, on Fridays. Who are the people that go to the churches and the mosque? These are adherents of the various religion practices. Now, what our religious leaders must do is to try to change the system so that you don't pass the buck. Because the truth is, these preachers will preach what suits them. The preacher that is looking for money, that wants to wear suits, he will tell you to, to, to pay this one. And then they'll say this to one. you that if you don't pay your tithes, you, you are not making... So this seed, pay this one, give offering. I don't have any business with what you want to do with your money. But as an elected representative, I have an issue with you. If you do not create a system and strong institutions that will make life difficult for people who want to cheat us. Which is why it's gotten to the point where people are even asking if religious institutions should be taxed because everything has been so flawed, everything has been reversed. We're not even using the systems in the right way. It is a huge problem. Very but true. thank you to the vice president and the acting president for coming out and saying something that means so much to the Nigerian people. Very, very true. And as we expect our religion leaders or our religious leaders to do the needful, our political leaders must also do well. Absolutely. I mean, we have state governors that have not paid salaries now. Mm -hmm. They go to church on Sunday. They go to mosque on Friday. Mm -hmm. And they give them special seats. Because the honest truth is God has given us all the natural resources we need. God has given us everything that we need in Nigeria to succeed. And it's up to us to decide on what we want to do with that. I if agree. we're still looking at uh, Seraph reports of 112 pages that are telling us uh, how many presidential pardons, Chukudi? Three presidential pardons. How many high-profile cases? If we count it, it's all seven. <sighs> to enjoy more of these our Ugonke videos when you just watch, press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.